<clears throat> okay. So in our previous demo, we had uh, a GUI which we built, and we started to talk about what we would need for the functionality of our basic text editor, but we haven't actually done anything up till now with the code. So we've written uh, not a single line of code, but we've developed a GUI using VXPro. So in this demonstration, we'll actually take this GUI and turn it into something that we can use and compile and run as a standard application. So if you recall, let's open up our original GUI that we created from the last section. And here we go. So just to remind everyone, let's go ahead and play this and take a look at a live demo of the application. So we have the ability to get to this about box. And we have some options for copying and pasting, but we don't actually have anything hooked up with those yet. And we have the ability to open files, but this isn't hooked up to anything yet. And we also have the ability to save a file. Again, this is not hooked up to anything, just basic functionality. And then exiting the file. So that is our GUI up till now. And let's actually get to a point where we can compile this. So I'm going to go ahead and say generate C. And now we can see that we've actually generated a number of elements here, including, for example, the make file. And we have our set of callbacks here and some utility files here and then the main file. So the first thing we'd like to do is see what we get just right now. So we can compile this file right now and we'll get a main file that we can execute. And here we get our basic application again, but you'll notice that nothing works at the moment. And that's because while BX Pro provided us with some conveniences to sort of prototype our GUI, none of the code that does the actual work has been written yet for this. So let's go ahead and think about how we want to do that. We're going to actually do all of our code, or at least most of it, in Scheme, but we will need to do a little bit of glue on the C side. So let's start by sort of preparing our application for what we'll need in order to do the uh, rest of it. So let's start by just being able to run this whole application from Scheme rather than from a C file. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our make file. <clears throat> and inside this make file, I actually want to generate objects or a shared object instead of a final executable. So I'm going to enable the um, position independent code generation. And then I'm going to create a new target where there's some room for it. And we're going to sort of base our new target off of the old one. But we're going to say, let's generate a shared object. instead of a, an executable. 
So there we have that. And now let's test whether we can exit it. We've got a little bit of a uh, leftover cludge, so let's clean it. Run it again. So everything seems to compile okay. And now we can test and we can see that some of the functions defined from our application are visible in that shared object file. So let's let's start thinking about how we want to actually do the main. So we're going to go into main and we'll see what we actually run in here in our main file. And since we're going to be executing this from scheme in the before we run into the main loop, the main loop is going to handle most of our event handling, but we're using the threaded version of Shea Scheme. So I want to deactivate the thread before I start into the seaside so that the scheme side can continue to do any garbage collection it needs to um, while it's running. Now that means that we're going to have to include our scheme header. And so we will need to copy our scheme header in here. And let's see what we get. Okay. So all good. And now we're ready to get this thing working. So we're going to need a main file, and I'm going to tell it to load in some shared objects that we're probably going to need. Okay, the first one is just the standard C library that's going to give us some utilities. The second one is the motif shared object, and the third one is going to be our GUI and all of the utilities that we generate from our GUI. And I want to wrap all of this in top-level form. I'll let so that everything is compiled and optimized in one application form. And at the very end of this expression, I'm going to set my start procedure. It's called program and stuff. And so to start with, let's let's write this procedure, or at least let's let's get an idea of what we want this procedure to be. And we want to call the main function. So our basic idea is that we're going to call eventually main and we're just going to pass the equivalent of our argv here. But we can't quite do this because argv is going to have to be a, a string array. So we're going to want this to be an f-type pointer. which just means that we're going to actually use Shea Scheme's foreign function type um, for handling data. And that also means that we're going to need to probably uh, handle this explicitly. So we're going to need to allocate something for the string. So let's... You know, let's let's call it, do this something for this string here. Uh, we'll call it 
maybe yeah so this is going to be an array so let's just give it a make a specific name type for it or better yet let's yeah this this will be fine and then we're going to have to allocate some space for it So here we have some space to store a program name string. And then let's make an arg list. And let's give it a type. And let's also Allocate some space for that. Okay. And so let's fix our indentation a bit. And now <clears throat> let's start splitting some things out. We're going to need We're going to need some foreign functions, and we're going to need some data types. All right, there we go. So our basic idea is that we're going to allocate and store our program name into the program name foreign side and we're going to then store that pointer into the argv list so to make this all easy on us let's define our program name string up here and let's define a length to the program name string something like that. But we actually want to be a little bit more. There we go. So it's going to be 1 plus the byte vector length. And that'll be enough to hold our size. <clears throat> so then we can define an F type. Of program name type, and that's just going to be an array in this case of five characters. And our argv is just going to be an array of one element. And it's going to be a prog name type. Or more precisely, a pointer with type. Like so. Okay. Now that we have that, we're getting closer. So we're going to want to make use of memcopy here, the C library function, to help us 